As we all know, politicians are responsible for making law changes that directly affect the economy and of course the stock market right along with it. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look at what stocks they've been buying most recently over the past month. And in today's video, we're going to be starting with Democrats first. We're going to take a look at the seven most recent purchases that they made as a whole recently over the past month. And you're going to want to make sure that you're subscribed because exactly one week from now, next Sunday, we're going to make the same exact video before Republicans and take a look at what stocks they've been buying too. So it's going to be a ton of fun. You're going to want to make sure you're subscribed. You don't want to miss it. With that said though, we've got seven stocks to run through in today's video. It's quite a few. So we're just going to do a really quick rapid fire of them. I'll give you a quick brief description of what these stocks are. I'll share my thoughts on each one of them and to make things a little more fun, I'll even rank them from best to worst based on my own opinion. And of course, I'll let you know if I plan to buy any of these stocks myself anytime soon too. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump straight into the list. All right, guys. So I pulled these stocks from CapitalTrades.com, which lists all the stocks that active politicians in Congress are buying. And stock number one is going to be automatic data processing, ticker symbol ADP, which Democrats purchased up to $15,000 of over the past month. Now, by the way, politicians don't have to give exact figures. They only have to give a certain range. So all we really know here is that less than $15,000 of ADP stock was purchased by them over the past month. Now, ADP is a fairly popular stock to invest in who is famous for providing payroll solutions to companies so that they don't have to worry about all the payroll, HR, time management, taxes, and other processing type of work, but instead can just focus on running their own core business more efficiently, whether they're small, medium sized, or even large. You might even remember seeing that ADP logo on your pay stub back in the day before direct deposit became a more popular thing. Anyway, it's a pretty reliable business that will always be needed. Thus, their financials are usually stable during any type of economic cycle. Even right now with how bad the macro economy is looking, their sales are still expected to continue climbing by high single digit percentages. Unfortunately though, that strong performance means that the stock rarely ever dips as it's currently sitting close to an all time high while the rest of the market has essentially been crashing or dipping very hard. And thus their valuation is around 40 to 50% more expensive than the sector. Some of that is offset by the strong dividend that has grown for nearly five decades in a row, but at only a 2% yield, it's not very much compared to our current inflation rate. So overall, this stock is a bit of a mixed bag. Great business, good dividend, and stable stock performance, but the price and the valuation is too high to generate any kind of you know really meaningful returns from here, so I'd rather buy something else. I'll rank them near the middle for now though at number three, and we'll see what else is on this list. Okay, moving on to stock number two, we have another very long-term dividend type of stock in Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO, which Democrats also purchased less than $15,000 of in the past month. Of course, Coca-Cola is famous for their very popular drinks, including Coca-Cola itself, as well as Sprite, Dr. Pepper, Powerade, Smart Water, Vitamin Water, and much more. This stock has also been a longtime favorite of the great Warren Buffett, who owns it for the reliable performance and dividend. Financially, KO puts up strong sales and profits during most types of economic cycles because of their brand popularity, with sales still rising by a double digit percentage this year, despite all of the recession fears, which is probably why Democrats are liking the stock right now for a little bit of like a recession proof type of business here, similar to ADP. However, I have never been a fan of this stock myself as the price is always too high with a valuation that is 25% more expensive than the sector. And while the dividend is very impressive at a 60 year growth history, the yield is just too low to get me very excited about it at less than 3%. But really the biggest reason of all why I've never been a fan is just because I actually own Pepsi stock myself, which I feel has a much stronger and more diversified business, including their solid snack foods division in uh, Frito-Lays. So I've just never felt any kind of urge to buy Coca-Cola stock and thus I'll put them slightly behind ADP for now at number four. 
Okay, stock number three though is going to be a stock here that I've actually have had uh, quite a bit of interest in for some time, and that is Home Depot, ticker symbol HD, which Democrats purchased less than $30,000 of over the past month. Now, I don't own HD stock yet myself, but like I said, I've always been intrigued by them because of the reliable home improvement retail business that is even growing larger online while also paying an attractive growth-oriented dividend. Business-wise, people will always need tools and all kinds of construction and project and home-related products that they sell, which many times need to be purchased in person, hence why their physical retail business has thrived even during the rise of online shopping and the retail apocalypse. But even elsewhere, HD has also done a great job of investing heavier into their online shopping platform too that has even helped them grow into the fifth largest online retailer in America, even tied with the giant Target, which is pretty crazy. As a result, they consistently put up strong financials on both the top and bottom line, with sales even skyrocketing during the pandemic and the recession that occurred during it, thanks to so many people staying home and working on various projects. Coming off of the pandemic though, growth is coming way down, with sales only expected to climb by a low single digit percentage. And while that did cause the stock to recently lose more than a quarter of its value, leaving it trading about 15% cheaper than their own five year average, it's still around 30% more expensive than the sector, while the dividend yield is only less than 2.5%, which isn't all that attractive. Still, HD is a good and reliable long-term bet, and the dividend has some excellent growth metrics on it, like a low payout ratio and both a double-digit growth rate and growth history. So I actually do like them slightly more than ADP, and for that reason, I'll go ahead and swap them into the into their spot at number three, and I'll move ADP and Coca-Cola down one spot to fit it in. Okay, now for stock number four though, we actually have a pretty weird one here that is rarely ever talked about in Liberty Media, also known as the Formula One Group, ticker symbol FW. ONK, who is famous for their Formula One racing business, which is a nine month long motor racing competition that also markets through related video games and fantasy games. And Democrats purchased less than $100,000 of it over the past month. And actually, few people even know this, but even the great Warren Buffett purchased the stock recently too and has been an investor in the company for some time. Personally, though, I just have very little interest in this one. First of all, I think motor racing is boring, so it'd be hard for me to invest in a company that I have such little interest in their business. But on top of that, the company is not currently profitable, the stock is near an all-time high, and the valuation is more than 300% more expensive than the sector on a price of sales basis. So for me, it actually goes in last place for now at number seven. Okay, stock number five though is a stock that I actually own myself right now in the gaming giant Activision Blizzard, ticker symbol ATVI, who is currently trying to be acquired by Microsoft and Democrats went ahead and purchased the stock uh, at uh, around less than $45,000 of this one over the past month. Now, personally, I am extremely happy to see politicians buying the stock right now because I literally purchased this one just as a speculative gamble in hopes that the acquisition gets approved, which by the way, Warren Buffett also purchased Activision recently for the same reason. So I hope that this is a good sign that the deal will get approved since politicians may have some insider information on regulatory bodies. And currently the stock is trading at $73 while the acquisition price is $95. So that would be upside of around 30% if the deal does in fact go through. However, there are tons of regulatory hurdles that still need to be cleared. So this is by all accounts still a very high risk stock to bet on. And I myself only own a very tiny little piece of it for that reason. It's also hard to rank the stock on this list because I don't consider this to be an actual investment, but rather just kind of a speculative gamble at the moment. However, since it is the only stock that I own myself, I guess I kind of have to rank them the highest for now at number two, even though I would put a giant asterisk on that because again, it's just a tiny gamble for me.
Okay, moving on to the final two stocks though. Stock number six is actually another stock that I enjoy keeping a close eye on because of their work in artificial intelligence, hybrid cloud, and the attractive dividend. And that is International Business Machines, ticker symbol IBM, which Democrats purchased less than $15,000 of over the past month. And when looking at IBM, their Red Hat acquisition has turned them into a market leader in hybrid cloud, where they offer both physical on-site servers, as well as cloud-based ones that help companies transition to the cloud while also offering them more customized solutions to meet their specific needs. But in all, IBM has really become a services machine that offers all kinds of solutions to the largest corporations around the world, ranging from analytics to artificial intelligence, which by the way is heavily boosted by their famous Watson platform platform, but they also do customer service, you know, storage, they do a ton of security, machine learning, and much more. They really just provide all sorts of services and things that really help organizations run smarter and more efficiently. In fact, IBM Cloud now serves 94% of Fortune 50 companies, Red Hat serves 94% of Fortune 500 companies, IBM Security serves two thirds of Fortune 500 companies, and IBM Consulting serves the top 10 companies in finance, telecom, automotive, healthcare, and the public sector. The result is strong free cash flow in the billions of dollars every year, but unfortunately, IBM is also a legacy company that has mostly been in decline for some time, dropping from 15 billion in 2020 down to 10 billion in 2021 and less than 7 billion over the past year as they struggle to grow in a weakening macro economy, especially as companies are now cutting costs in the face of a looming recession. Still, IBM could potentially be a good turnaround play here as the stock has been beaten down for years, leaving them with a cheaper adjusted valuation than the sector and a pretty attractive dividend of over 4.5 percent with over two decades of consecutive growth i still think there's much better options in the market though so i won't be buying the stock myself but i do like it slightly more than the rest that are on here as a high yielding kind of turnaround play so i'll actually give it the number two ranking for now even ahead of hd and i'll bump activision up one spot to fit it in Okay, and finally at stock number seven, we have Johnson & Johnson, ticker symbol JNJ, &J, which Democrats purchased less than $15,000 of over the past month. And like IBM, I've actually been tracking JNJ &J for years now too, as they're a dividend king with a massively large business that actually made them the largest pharmaceutical company in the world. That is until Pfizer came around and they released the pepperoni V shot that instantly doubled their size and gave them the number one spot. Of course, J&J also had their own version of the pepperoni shot, but it was more controversial and not as popular, so it didn't really end up helping their business a whole lot. Speaking of controversy, J&J has also suffered from various lawsuits and scandals that have weighed heavily on the company and ultimately suppressed the stock for years, leaving it only climbing by about 15% in the past five years and still trading around 10-20% to cheaper than the sector despite their market leadership. And because of that, I do actually think that the stock is attractive right now from a long-term perspective as I believe they will gradually move past those issues, leaving behind a still giant behemoth with with some of the world's most popular brands like Band-Aid, Listerine, Benadryl, Tylenol, Aveeno, Johnson's Powders and Lotions, and a lot more. I mean, there's this giant list of all the things that they have. And that's led to huge financials of close to $100 billion in sales and over $20 billion in profits just last year alone. However, the reason why I've never pulled the trigger on the stock myself is because of their relatively low growth, which is also partially offset by the dividend that has been grown for a monstrous six decades in a row, but still yields just less than 3%, which isn't anything too crazy or all that attractive. Overall, I think J&J is a pretty solid long-term stock to invest in for most people, but it's not one that I'm overly excited about right now. I still think that there's better options in the market. However, it's still probably the best one on this list, so I'll give them the number one spot anyway and move the rest down one spot to fit it in. But there you have it, guys. I put J&J &J at number one for the long-term safety, Activision at number two as a speculative gamble but not an actual investment, 
IBM at number three for the turnaround potential and the attractive dividend and business, even though it's struggling at the moment, but I do think they have future potential. Home Depot at number four for the reliable retail business, both physical and online. ADP at number five for the very solid business, but unfortunately the valuation is too high and the dividend is too low. And then Coca-Cola at number six, which I think most people would probably rank higher, but I just think PepsiCo is a much better option, so I have no interest in owning it. And then I put Formula One Racing at number seven, because I just have no interest in anything that they do. But there you have it, guys. I'm personally not a huge fan of this list. I think there's a lot of slow-moving, kind of boring stocks here that I personally wouldn't really be all that interested in investing in. I think there's better options, more exciting options out there in the market. But we'll have to see if Republicans can do any better next week. So you're going to want to make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. It'll be next Sunday. and We'll take a look at what they're buying too. But let me know down in the comment section, what do you think about these stocks? Any of them catch your eye? Uh, do you agree with my ranking? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And I will catch you in the next video. Thanks again for all the support, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.